Okay. Um, this is how Moto opens. We're used to this by now, I think. Uh, I'm going to close that window, and I'm going to make sure that I am in um, non-orbit mode. Uh, that should have already happened on your machine, but if not, if I click here, and I go to viewport settings, and I go to mouse control, trackball rotation should, should say no. Uh, if it says no, that's good. That means I can start to work with my first keyboard equivalent, which is that alt key. Uh, what I want to show you here is the technique for getting, for any 3D um, animator or modeling I know of, which involves having a three button mouse with, and you'll watch them click on screen, a left mouse button, a right mouse button, and a middle mouse button that's also a wheel. See that? And having a keyboard that's a control panel. See that? Just hit something over there and it basically lit up. Uh, if someone wants to get good at modeling or anything in 3D, you're going to be working with one hand on the mouse and one hand on the keyboard. Uh, in particular, there's a bunch of keys on the left side of the keyboard that we have to know how to use to get fast, to get to the point where we can actually model something in 20 or 30 minutes. Um, let me talk about our layout here. Uh, we have the tabs up here, which are basically different programs. For the time being, we'll probably only be here and here, where it opens up by default modeling. Over here, we have a toolbar. These are various tools we can use to do stuff, and we'll talk about a few of those today. Uh, if I pick a tool, like that, we have the things that apply to that toolbar out here. These are the things I can change about this tool. Um, if I go into my view here, this is the 3D world I want to work with, and we have those work planes that we talked about before. I'm going to use my first keyboard equivalent, which is very important, which is the Alt key. When I hold down Alt, my mouse pointer changes, and I can move around my screen. With the left mouse button, I get to move around the camera. With the right mouse button, I get to move around where the camera looks. Almost all modeling I know of starts at zero, zero, zero. It starts at that origin, which is the thick line there in the middle. As a matter of fact, I can hit the A key, another keyboard equivalent, that will center up my screen. So if I want to start making a cube in the middle of this screen, I'm going to click here and start to pull like that. Now you'll see those numbers change because these are things that apply to the thing I'm building, right? And I get these transform manipulators, red, green, and blue. Remember, those three things are going to go throughout everything we do here. There's X, Y, and Z. There's translate, rotate, scale. Um, there's left mouse button, middle mouse button, right mouse button. In this case, the red, green, and blue are different parameters of this cube I can change while it's still live. If I click on this and pull, I get that. If I click on this and pull, I can shorten it this way or that way. And I should be thinking about what I have at hand here, which is a kind of floppy sort of frog looking thing, about where I'd want to start building this. I'm going to hold down my Alt key and rotate around, and I'll think of my frog sort of like this. Uh, maybe we'll try like that. And I should be able to move the whole thing too by grabbing any of these axes, red, green, or blue, like that. If I'm happy with that, I could leave the tool, which is one of the keys we're going to have to learn, which is the Q key, but I'm not going to leave it yet. Um, I need to change some things. I need to give myself more detail to work with. That's in the segments down here, and I could enter a value. Like I could click there and put in five, and if I go down, it should show me five of those now. Or I can grab this slider, and I can slide and interactively see it giving me more detail. Man, I hope that's not going to be an issue. I'll give it three subdivisions this way. Uh, I have five that way, and I'll give it um, maybe four that way. This is going to be important because I need to be able to manipulate my points, edges, and polygons, which are going to get into the push buttons that we're talking about. Um, okay. I'm going to say I'm happy with that, and I'm going to drop the tool. And that's going to deal with these buttons up top, Q, W, E, R in the upper left hand corner of the screen, or of the keyboard I should say. When I hit the Q button, I've dropped the tool. 
that means you see I no longer could control it and I can't change those things about it anymore. It's now in place and I could start to manipulate it. Now, here's some keyboard equivalents that are really important. They are one, two, three, and see when I do them how that changes up top there? And Q, which drops something, W, E, R, which is translate, move it around, rotate, rotate it around, scale, which scales it up, down, left, right, so on and so forth. I want you to know these one, two, three, and Q, W, E, R keys because we're going to start doing point edge and polygon manipulations to make this look more frog-like. And if I can use these keys very fast, I can get from mode to mode very quickly. Um, I'm going to go into polygon mode, which I happen to know is three, which means when I select something, if I click on it with my left mouse, I'm selecting polygons like that. Now I'm going to select the polygons on both sides here by holding down the shift key. I now have a matching set of polygons on both sides and I want to push them out, which the R key scaling will allow me to do. Okay, I sort of like that. Uh, I'm going to drop that tool like that and I'm going to select different polygons. I'm not holding down my shift key, but I'm going to select all these polygons on the front here and I'm going to scale this selection like this because it might eventually become a head. Uh, and I'll take, I'm going to hit Q and I'll take just these nine here and I'm going to translate those ones with the W key and I'll rotate around like this and push them out like that, we'll say, to start. Okay, so what I have here so far is I'm able to grab a tool over here and um, we'll grab a different tool just to do it. Uh, I'm going to right mouse click this and pick sphere and then I'm going to put some spheres that are going to be eyes. Um, I'm going to start them down here and I'll rotate around that and go like that up there and now I'll move this eye. Let's hit Q to drop it. Um, I'm going to in polygon mode move this eye. I'm going to select some of these polygons and I'm going to use another keyboard equivalent, the right bracket. Right bracket collects everything connected to that object. And I'm going to translate it with my W key. And we'll put it over here, we'll say. And I have to keep looking around my scene to make sure I'm getting my perspective right. Uh, are we inside that? Yeah, we are inside that. Um, I'm going to duplicate it. Uh, control C, Control V, and if I translate immediately, I should have a different set. Oh, no, I did something awful. I'm going to Control Z my way backwards until it doesn't get all messed up like that. And I'm going to make myself a different set of them. Um, I'll go under the edit menu to do this. I will copy, and then let's see the paste tool. There we go. And now you'll see if I grab onto just one axis, I can make sure I'm on the same level as that is, like that. Now I'm going to deselect. I actually, to deselect, I'll just go to one mode, which is point mode, and I'll see how that's looking, and if it's starting to look more frog like. And I can move in and out. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, what do you think of trying with the thing you have in hand? Use the one, two, and three key points such as polygons. Q to drop a tool, W, E, R to scale, rotate, translate, and then play around with your tools and things and see what you can make out of these objects, okay? Okay, good. Let me put a stop.